Merry Christmas and a hello, people! And today I'm going to show you how to make a snowball for your game. So as you can see, this is a snowball, and as you can also, and yeah, so I'm going to show you how to make a snowball that you could throw and also instant kill you. And all, and yeah, I'm going to show you how to do it. Let's get started. All right, so first off, get your own base plate, and yes, you can make uh, the snow terrain as soon as possible to make the theme look perfect. And now we're going to insert a part. We're going to turn it into a spear. And this is a good old spear. So I'm just going to raise it up. And then I'm going to do is I'm just going to set 1, 1, 1. So it will make the ball smaller. Set the co coloring to about white. And I'm going to set it up to slate. So uh, yeah, I think this looks good. This looks like an actual paper ball. But, this look but I'm going to pretend this is a snowball. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set it to our handle and then go to start a pack, insert tool, and then we're going to name it Snowball. And then we'll put it in the handle. And then I'm going to do is I'm going to just put, just put not anchored and then cut it off. As you can see, I'm right here. And as you can see, I got the snowball effect. So as you see, this is my snowball. Once you're done with the snowball, let's do some animation. So if you wanna, if you actually uh, don't know what animation is, it's currently a good touch for your, you know, making your tool. So I'm gonna show you how to use animation editor. So what I'm gonna do is go to plugins, to uh, animation editor, and it should pop out right here. And then what are we gonna do is we're gonna go uh, take this model that I'm gonna put. I'll put the link in the description below. And you can see this is uh, my model right here. This is called the throw animation pack. I'll put the link in the description. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click using it and I'm going to select the rig. And as you can see, it has my animation right here. This is the animation. Mm -hmm. It's so clean. Yeah, if you want to, uh, you know, adjust some of the animation, if you can. If you want to know how I got this animation, it's because it's my animation save. So it saves my animation and you can use this uh, for your game. And once you've done that, just export the, the animation. You know, like so, and uh, you can just type whatever you want, and yeah, it will make your animation. Since once you're done for your animation, you're going to need to set up for your tool because your tool is just a handle, and it's just not what you want to expect it. So what you're going to do is we're going to insert a a script, a local script, and a remote event, and then what we're going to do is we're going to insert a animation inside the script, and we're going to rename this throw. And then I'm gonna get my animation ID. So this is my animation ID. Make sure uh, it, it is your own animation ID because Roblox could not give animations to everyone. So you have to make your own and make your own animation ID. So yeah. And also make sure uh, if you want R15, well, you make sure your animation is such an R15. Otherwise, just publish your game, go to game settings, and then change your change the avatar settings to R15 or R6 or what do you want to call that. And once we've done that, let's go ahead and uh, insert some sound. As you can see, I got these two sounds. This one's going to be the throw sound effect. This is the throw sound effect. Kind of clean. And this one is the scoop. Once you've done that, let's go to the script. So this script's going to be our main script. This is going to hold everything, whatever you can. Let's say this. So we're going to say local. For search, we're going to do some variables. Local db equals false. And then we're going to make a variable called direction. I'll talk about that. And then we're going to make a, a game service. So local debris equals game colon get service colon debris. And then, and then I'm going to show you how to make the up and down animation that I actually put on my equip when you equip the snowball. So it's a good catch. So I'm going to show you how I did it. So I'm going to say script.parent.e whip collect function and then we're going to do some for loops so we're going to say for i for i equals four uh comma negative four comma dot negative five five and then do then we're going to say script dot parent dot grip position equals vector three dot new equals zero comma one comma i comma zero 
and then I'm going to do a wait function. Then I'm going to do the same thing again, but this one's going to be different. This time I'm going to say four. This one is zero, and this one is five. And then we got the wait. So that is the animation right here. All right. Next up, what are we going to do? Is we're going to uh, go to the local script, and then we're going to say this: local player equals game dot players dot local player. And then we we'll say local mouse equals uh, uh, player plant get mouse. So this one right here, we're going to get the mouse. And then we're going to say a script.parent.activate colon connect function. So when you click something, an activation will happen. Then we'll say script.parent.remote event colon fire the server. And then we're going to say mouse.hit.p. So we're going to activate uh, what mouse is pointing on. And then right over this line, we're going to say uh, script dot parent dot remote event dot unserve event clone connect function you will say the player and the mouse pause and then we're going to say direction equals mouse position and I'm going to talk about that when with the directions okay since once you've done that we're going to say this we're going to say script dot parent dot activate clone connect function and then we're going to say if not db then then we'll say db equals true all right if it's true now we're going to have to play the animation this one was we're going to require some serious timing so i always are uh, persistent with timing so make sure you talk to me with that so i'm going to say local humanoid equals script dot parent dot parent colon find first child colon humanoid. I'm going to say local throw anim equals uh, humanoid colon load animation and then I'm going to say script dot throw because script inside is a throw so here we have a throw. I'm going to say throw anim clone play. Then we're going to wait for about half a second then we're going to make a ball so we're going to Throw the ball. Then we're going to change the C framing, which is going to be a difficult one, but stick with me. So we're going to talk about this. So we say ball dot C frame equals C frame dot new. So first off, we're going to need the position for the handle. So we need so when a ball throws, it needs to position the the handle for the ball. So we'll say script.parent.handle.position. Then I'm going to offset it to upwards. Then we're going to say script.parent.handle.cframe. Now look vector uh, about three. And then we're going to go to the direction of the ball who's throwing. If the so this is the direction. And the direction is the mouse position, so we need so when it clicks it, we need to know what direction what the ball is throwing, so what the mouse is doing. And then what are we gonna do is we're going to add some little bit of decoration, so this is gonna be the trail. And yes, that's how you make a trail. Now I'm going to add uh, a body velocity just for a, just for the backup. Then we're going to make a variable for the orientation equals zero. And then we're going to make a spawn function. So spawn function. And then we're going to inside that spawn function, we're going to do a while loop. While wait do. And then we're going to say ori equals ori negative. Point one. Then we're, then we're going to change the C framing. Ball dot C frame equals ball dot C frame plus ball dot C frame dot look dot look vector. And then we're going to uh, 
multiply that by 4 so it will move going on going on then we're going to change the orientation dot orientation equals vector 3 dot new then we're going to copy this but this time I want to change some differences so by orientation dot x by orientation dot y and by dot orientation dot z and under that first parameter then I'm going to plus it then ori so what it's doing so orientation is going to go down and go down so that means it will make a curve down so and also it will update the look vector so it will make it look realistic now we're going to make a touch friction for the ball so then we're going to do is we're going to say ball dot touch colon, colon connect to function on the hit and then we're going to say then we're going to destroy the ball ball colon destroy and then but first we need to detect if it hits a player so we're going to say local player whose game dot players colon get player from character hit dot parent so if so if player then so if it's a real player not an NPC if it's a real player then we're gonna say this local char equals uh, player dot character local humanoid equals uh, char clone find first child uh, equals humanoid and say humanoid dot health equals zero so and also for good good crap we're going to say this humanoid dot platform stand equals true so when it's true the player will not move so I really just tested out with platform stand it does kind of look quirky for me now I'm going to add some effects for the ball All right, then I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this coding right here. So we're going to add a sound effect. And this is the ID for the sound effect. So this is the sound effect right here. And then we're going to do is I got this coding right here. So I'm not going to type all of this because I'm going to have a hand seizure for this. And we're going to, so what it's going to do is so we're going to do a for loop, which is definitely the worst thing. But it's going to spawn in about 11 times, I believe. We're going to clone the effect or clone, and then we're going to parent it to the workspace. And then what it does, it will spread out everything. So that makes an effect. So that's why uh, I added that. You can just change the middle one. You, if you want it 20, then you can add 20. And if you want 50, then you want 50 parts. Yeah, you just whatever so far and so forth. And lastly, we're going to do is we're going to reload the ball. So we're going to reload. And then we're going to wait for about 4.5 seconds. Script.parent.handle.scoop. Come on, play. I'm going to wait for two seconds. And the scooping will stop. And then it will make the handle reappeared again so transparency equals zero so wait for five seconds db equals false and there you go that is how uh, the script dot activate works and yeah that's a lot of coding to do bruh oh boy i'm back right here as you can see i got this snowball and it throws it up and if i click something As you can see, it actually works. Yeah, it does some zigzagging, but I don't care. But here you go, that's how you make a snowball. It's remote!